Good morning, YouTube. Dr. Sola, coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So, um, quick brief update. So today, actually, we're going to push the solar X power inverter. So I always have one AC running. We're going to have two AC running. I'll put on um, either the water, other water pump or put the microwave on to push it to see how far we can push it. So, um, I purchased this freezer and a freezer takes about two days to three days for it to get to temperature, so for everything inside to freeze. So, as you can understand, it's putting a lot of um, strain on our resources just to get the temperature. So it's going to take, it's going to take quite a few days. Um, let me go back. So there's a lot of meat we purchased and put in there. We killed a couple of goats and they're inside the freezer. So it will take a little bit of time for the meat to get frozen. In the interim, however, the freezer will keep making huge demands for power till we get to that point. Today, I believe, is that crossover where it would not require as much energy because the contents should be fully frozen. As you can see, it's off now and the refrigerator is off. I woke up this morning and I checked my state of charge. And while remember before I was I wasn't happy that the batteries were not discharging. So if you notice it's graduated 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%, and it's only 25% blinking. So the battery state of charge is less than 25%. Um, yesterday when I woke up, it was, I don't know, 19 or 20, I don't remember. Well, today is where we've been for the last hour and a half, 13%. I had turned everything off because I don't want the power going off. What happens when my power goes off is my internet goes off and then doesn't come back on until I contact the provider and then they have to reset something at their end in order for me to have power again and for me that's not acceptable so right now it is still quite early um, let's see system status PV1 right now is producing 12 watts which is nothing PV2 13 watts which is still nothing so um, we're going to be we're going to be in a little bit of um, well we're going to be a little bit on edge for a little, for a while. So let me show you my residual current device that I installed yesterday, and I've heard I've received quite a few comments about people telling me that I'm not going to have um, earth leakage protection. You're absolutely correct, but you know the funny thing is for the years we've run the stuff. This is the first time we're putting an RCD on any of our systems. We've now, we've now run RCDs on any of our systems, and we've been doing this for years. If you recall yesterday, this was showing a hundred. Uh, sorry, we're showing two twenty-eight. Today, showing two thirty-one and zero amps. So let's see how that tallies to what the inverter itself is saying. So let me give. Wow, well, mosquitoes are biting me today. System status. So we'll go to EPS. Bear with me. That whiplash thing I do when I move it so fast. EPS. So EPS is saying it's 229.8 volts on our inverter, 230 now. And this is saying 231. So I don't know who to believe. Should I believe that one? Or should I believe this one? When we get a multimeter, we'll test and then we'll see which one is correct. Um, so far so good. I'm not happy about the state of charge of the battery, but I believe until we fully cycle from uh, minimum, minimal numbers to meaningful numbers, we will continue to have um, this issue. So today, we're going to go from 13% to 100. Hopefully by the time we cycle one or two more times, we should be getting close to full capacity. So let me explain real quick what I mean by that. Lithium batteries, and let us it. Let me just say batteries as a whole. When you first put them in, you don't get full capacity, and especially so with um, lithium batteries. What happens is they take a few days to balance and equalize. 
So this particular unit has a balancer and an equalizer. You notice that the first few days you install them, the battery does not get to 100%. And that's done on purpose. Um, as they discharge during transportation or sitting, even though the discharge is very minimal, there is an imbalance. So you have some cells that are higher than others. As they charge, the battery management system in the battery will try to make sure that all the cells are at the same voltage and also close to the same capacity. Even though it has no true way of measuring capacity, it just keeps feeding till they all come to the same voltage. That is what happens with these batteries. Now, in our case, if you recall, our BMS continued to show that the battery, the lowest state of charge was 94%. Yesterday was the first time we discharged below 94%. At least it showed that we're below 94%, showing us what the true capacity of our batteries were. So hopefully that explanation, um, hopefully me explaining it that way helps you understand where I'm coming from and what I'm looking to accomplish. So for those of you who talked about RCDs, yes, I'll, I'll revisit the earthing. I already I have two earth rods side by side. I'll connect them and then I'll check to make sure the colors aren't broken. But we've run our systems without RCDs for the longest time, since 2014. I've not really had any issues. We've not had an inverter fail. We've not had electrical failures. We are very, very meticulous. So thank you very much for expressing your concerns. But seriously, I'm not going to put an RCD back in because the inconvenience that we've gone through so far was not worth the um, protection that you're asking me to put in. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up.